Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. I missed you guys. I feel like it's been a minute. I just got back from Tokyo about a week ago and I was jet lagged all week long and I finally feel so much better. I finally feel back to myself and it feels good to be back in my makeup chair. And I wanted to start off this week with a give you guys some hotness, some sauciness, some gold, smoky, something I haven't done in a while. I feel like I've been playing with so many different stuff, but I wanted to give you guys like a really bomb go-to smoky eye that anybody can wear. A look that I feel my absolute best in and a look that I know you guys are just going to absolutely love. So today's video is very, very special to me because I'm partnering with one of my favorite brands ever, Urban Decay. Let's give them a warm welcome, everybody. Urban Decay and I have teamed up for today's video to show you guys how to get this eye makeup look right here using their brand new Naked Reloaded palette and I can't tell you guys how excited I am about this. I've been a huge Urban Decay fan for many, many years. I've been a big fan of the Naked palettes overall. I feel like I've seen every single one of them come out. And as sad as it was to say RIP to the original one, but it's really exciting to bring this new one right here that you can create endless looks with. So this is one of the looks that I created and I absolutely love it. I feel like this is my go-to eye, my go-to smoky eye. I feel when people think of smoky, they always think like black, dark, no transition. They just think of it being really intense when in reality that's not the case at all. So I'm trying to figure out what kind of look I wanted to do today. I knew that I wanted to recreate one of my old smoky eye looks that I've done in the past. So I went digging and digging and digging through my Instagram. Like the scrolling was real that day. And I was just trying to find a look that I knew would be wearable, something that I felt comfortable and really pretty in. I was trying to just find something that I knew that you guys would also like as well, that you guys could achieve at home and that would look good on any eye shape. So this was the look that I found and I said, you know what? I have all the colors in this palette let's go ahead and upgrade this look and so this is what I created I think it's absolutely beautiful and I feel like it's a look that you guys literally could wear like anybody could create this so I hope you guys are excited about today's video this palette is also available now so at the end of the video let me know what you guys think about it if you guys are gonna be checking it out and if you guys are gonna be getting it so get your snacks ready and take some notes and let's get into today's video Hello. So I went ahead and did this eye off camera and I always like to do this because I like to make sure I pick the right shades for the look. I also like to watch Netflix and some stuff in between so I really just take my time with it. But it really just gives me time to pick the right colors and figure out the look before I go on to this side. So I figured the best primer to go with a naked palette is gonna be the Primer Potion from Urban Decay. And all I'm gonna do is apply this primer all over the eyelid. So I'm gonna use the applicator that it comes in and I'm gonna start this right in the middle of the eye. And then from there, I'm gonna work to the front. And I'm not gonna read it back in either because it does have a pretty good amount of product on there. And once it's on, you can actually take in your ring finger or a brush. So I'm just gonna go in with the flat synthetic brush. And I'm just gonna go ahead and disperse the product throughout the eyelid. And this primer does have a nude undertone in there. So it is gonna camouflage any kind of discoloration you may have on the eye. It's gonna really ensure that you don't get any creases. It's gonna make the colors more vibrant. Just a lot of benefits from using a shadow primer. All right, so now that we have the primer on, we're gonna go ahead and move into the star of the hour, Miss Thing, Miss Upgraded. She's a whole new mood and she's here to stay. So say hello guys to the Naked Reloaded palette. So here she is, and I really wanna show you guys the outside of the palette because I think it's so beautiful and so unique. I love the gold foil on there, but I really love the way the palette feels on the outside. It's got this really nice silky, velvety kind of cushion finish on there, which makes it just feel so nice. But it's even prettier when to open it up. Inside, these are the shades in the palette. You get six mattes and six metallics. And something that I really want to point out about this palette that I like is the pan size. So if you'll notice, these first two shades are gonna be a little bigger than the shades right here. And then when you get to the end, these last two shades are also gonna be big as well. So if you really look closely at these shades, these are like the main shades that all of us seem to use. All of us use lighter shades and transition shades all the time, and those are the ones that we always hit pan on first. Like I know for me and all my palettes, you'll always find shades like this to hit pan. So I really love that they made these pan size bigger because they know that we use those shades more than the other shades. You know, when you're using shades like these, you tend to use just a little bit and that's it. But the main colors are always going to be these ones right here. I also love that the palette has a lot of wearable shades that you can really wear day and night. I already did a look, I think a few weeks ago on my Instagram wearing these shades right here and I did like a very peachy soft everyday look and it looks so good. So it's a palette that I can see myself wearing all the time because of the wearable shades in here. So with that said, let's go ahead and just jump into the video. So we're gonna go in first with the shade Blur which is gonna be the last shade on the palette and this is gonna be like the main transition shade you're gonna see all over my eyelid. 
So I'm gonna start this right on the outer crease of the eye, and then I'm just gonna start working it up in circular motion right into the high crease of my eye. So now moving into the shade Boundary, I'm gonna start this right on the bottom outer V of the eye. I'm gonna follow the same thing I did with the shade Blur, but now instead of blending it out as much as I was, I'm gonna to try to keep this more along my eye socket to really give depth in that area. And then I'm just gonna work this back and forth. And you can see the shade boundaries just slightly goes into the shade blur and then from there it, it literally just like blurs out and looks very just like blown out and that's exactly what i want in this look i really want to make sure the transition shades are really nice and blended out i'm gonna top my head back a little bit and then work the shade into the inner part of my crease now we're gonna move on to the shade Endgame, which is this dark matte shade. I'm gonna do this with two brushes. The first one I'm gonna apply this on with is the flat defining brush, and I'm just going to add this right along my lash line. So by doing this, you're really able to kind of guide where you want it to go. So for example, I have it there, and then now with my blending brush, I'm gonna go ahead and start right at the crease, and then start working that color up and out. And now just start kind of working the shade up into the crease as well. All right, I feel like we have enough smoke on the end. So now I'm gonna go back in with my primer potion and apply this onto the eyelid. Now normally I do cut the crease and I like it to be very intense, but I want this to be a little softer because it is daytime. So I'm gonna add this on the eyelid just kind of like that. And then with the flat brush, I'm gonna go ahead and just disperse the product on the eyelid kind of everywhere again not cutting just kind of blending it out into the shades so i'm gonna go in with the shade barely baked and this is a stunning champagne gold shadow and i'm gonna place that yep right there right on the lid so i'm gonna start this right on the lid and then work it side to side and i'm gonna tap 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 it up into the crease so that there's no demarcation of like a cut or anything and then also taking it on the side kind of into the crease shade and i love how that looks it's kind of placed over that shadow all right that looks so now with the shade angel fire which is another really pretty metallic shade in here this one has a little bit more of a i don't know kind of like a gold like a white gold kind of pinky for less i can't figure it out but i'm picking up a little bit of that and then some of my all nighter setting spray and i'm going to tap it right in the middle just to give a little bit of a pop so just add like a little something something in there exactly what i want it to do all right so next i'm going to go in with this maybelline master precise all day liquid eyeliner and just add a little bit onto my lash line i'm not going to wing this look but i do always feel like i need a little bit of liner on my eye i feel like I don't know about you guys, but I feel like this side can sometimes look a little wonky. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like this side always looks lower than this side. So for that reason, I have to add liner to like even it out. But if I don't add liner on this side, then it's not evened out. So for that reason, that's why I like to do it. So what I'm pretty much gonna do is just press this against my lash line. To me, instantly it just kind of finishes off my eye for me. Like you said, it just kind of completed that look. It just kind of pulls it all together. Whether you wing it or not, like a little bit of liner, black or brown will do that for you. It'll really just kind of pull the whole look. And then for mascara, I'm gonna be using the NARS Climax Mascara just to give my lashes a really nice lift, get them nice and full. Again, I always do this before I go in with lashes, and I really like to do this before lashes too. That way I don't get any mascara on the fake ones and I can reuse them later on. So I do just a few coats to just kind of even out my lashes. And then for lashes today, we're gonna to be going in with these from Lily Lashes, and these are in the style Hollywood. A little tip if you guys are new to lashes, I feel like I need to do like a lash video for you guys, but when you're doing lashes, I always recommend letting your glue sit out for a little bit so it can get nice and tacky. If you work directly from the tube or you barely take it out and put it on, what's gonna happen is that the glue is so wet that it's gonna move around and slide and get all over the place, which can cause you to have a very frustrating lash application. I know for me, when I first started wearing lashes, I would never let the glue get tacky. I would just like stick it on. And then it would obviously take forever for them to sit in. But once they did, there was glue everywhere, all over my eyelid, all over my lash, like pretty much everywhere. So I found that to be one of the reasons why I didn't like using lashes. And once I figured out that you gotta let the glue get a little tacky, kind of gummy in a way, then that made it a lot easier. So right now it's been sitting out for about three to four minutes. I put it on and then I still kind of, you know, let it around a little bit. And then from there, I kind of like to bend it so that it has a natural shape of the eye already. And then I'm just gonna pop this right in the middle of the eye. And then from there, I pick it up and then close my 
I'm gonna make sure that it doesn't poke anywhere. E. All right, there we go. Nice and on. All right, so I went in and backed up the camera so you guys can see a full look of how the eyes are looking from a distance and they look so bomb. So let's go to move on to the face products of the makeup. I already went ahead and did my foundation and primer off camera. And in case you guys are wondering what I have on because I have a lot to do today, I am just using the Lancome Absolute Soft Cream all over my skin along with the Ula Hendrickson Banana Bright Face Primer. This has been like my duo the last couple days and I really like how it looks. I have like a lot of do going on right now. I also have a bruise right there if you guys can see it. I just had my wisdom teeth removed, so I feel like I'm finally recovering from it, but that's one of the bruises that I have. So for today's foundation, I'm gonna be going in with the Lancome Tentadol in the shade 370 Bis W. So I like to pounce the product just kind of all over the skin and get a real flawless finish. I had a facial about a few weeks ago. Oh, I, already, I showed you guys actually on my vlog. I just remembered that right now. Um, but ever since I got my facial, my skin has just been glowing like no other. I feel like my zits have like calmed down. But for a while, my skin was really acting up. She was not not my favorite thing on me, but it's finally looking better. I'm doing another round of foundation. This is my first video filming since I, since Tokyo. I think the last video I filmed makeup was about three weeks ago. I have not sat down to film actually makeup in forever. And let me tell you guys, I was really struggling today. I kind of forgot. I was like, how, wait, how do I do this again? Wait, I felt, I literally was like so out of it for a minute. It was the funniest thing ever. I literally had to chug my coffee and like snap out of it. It feels good to be back in the makeup chair. I also have been decluttering this room in case anyone's wondering, I've been decluttering this room. Finally got the other side of the room done. I feel like since I've been back from Tokyo, it's been like a week of still recovering from jet lag. It was a 17 hour time difference. It really just gets to you. Like you're so exhausted, you're on different time zones. You're trying to adjust. So I was exhausted all week long, but I feel like Finally, like I don't feel jet lagged anymore. By the way, too, a little bit of information about this foundation in case you guys are wondering, it is a 24 hour wear transfer resistant foundation. I did do two layers because I did want extra coverage today and the results are quite amazing. I'm also gonna go over my ears a little bit. So for concealer today, I'm gonna be using the Jouer Essential High Coverage Concealer. This is a creaseless soft matte high coverage concealer. There's a lot of coverage in here, so a little goes a long way. Also is infused with hyaluronic acid, so it's gonna just lightly plump this area up. And I pretty much am just going to apply it right there, down the bridge of my nose as always. And then right here, areas I just kinda wanna brighten up. And then from there, I'm gonna go in with the back of the bead blender and pounce the concealer on just to really get it to stay where I want it to. I love the concealer that does not crease at all. I feel like if you love a full coverage for concealer, this is definitely one to look into. Um, I also love that it's not drying either. I feel like there's some concealers that have really great coverage, but they have a really drying finish. This one looks really nice and hydrated throughout the day because of the hyaluronic acid. So it definitely just makes my under eyes look really smooth. Uh, I'm taking a nail brush and cleaning up the side of the eye. Ooh, yes, it makes such a big difference doing that. I'm gonna go ahead and set my entire makeup. I'm gonna use two powders today. The first one is the Maybelline Fit Me Powder in the shade 220, along with the Laura Mercier Transistent Powder to do a little bit of baking. So what I'm gonna do with the Maybelline powder is I'm gonna grab an angle brush and I'm pretty much just going to press this like right on my T-zone area. So it creates like a very flawless like finish with that underneath of the eyes. So you can see the difference that the powder does immediately once you set. So I'm just gonna press it again. So before I go into baking, I'm gonna move into some bronzing first. So I'm gonna use today the Guerlain at number five. I believe it's called Brunette. I don't even know, it's so faded. I've had this for a very long time, but we're gonna go ahead and use that to do a little bit of bronzing all over the skin. So I'm gonna go along my hairline first. It's kind of give a little bit of like a bronze kind of effect. See how it gives me that bronze look? Exactly what I want it to do. So I start up here first and then just kind of work it around, around the outskirts of my face. I'm gonna start working it right along the cheekbone area and also along here. Now normally this isn't the brush that I like to use. The brush I normally like to use is actually over there drying. I washed it last night, but this one does work pretty good as well. And then for blush, I'm gonna be using this one from ColourPop. It's part of the Zuella ColourPop collection. And this is in the shade Soulmate. It's like a really pretty pink blush. I'm gonna be doing like a pretty pink lip, so I figured this would be a perfect blush to pair with it. So I'm just gonna add this right on the apples of my cheeks. Do you guys remember when I used to be anti-blush? I used to like never love blush. I was super against it for a really long time. And in the past maybe year or so, I like learned to love blush now, and now I can't live without it. I love it so much now. I'm gonna dip into my Laura Mercier Transistent Powder to do a little bit of baking and setting. And I'm gonna be using this with the large Laura Mercier Powder Puff as well. I'm just gonna set underneath of the eyes. 
even though I did already set with a little bit of powder, I do like this underneath to brighten up the area. Um, it gives like a double set as well. All right, so once I get to here, this is when I like to move on to the under eyes because everything is baking. We gotta wait a few minutes anyway, so might as well get the under eyes done and the lips done and then whoosh, it all off. I'm gonna go pretty much back in with the palette and use the shade Boundaries and Endgame to finish off my lower lashes. So I like to start off with the lightest shade first, the transition, which is Boundaries, and go directly underneath the eye with that. I used to go really close to the lash line, but I found it not to do anything. I feel like because this is a transition, you can go kind of low. So I just pretty much press the brush against the under eye and then just work side to side. And eventually when I do it dust away the product, some of this is gonna come off anyways. So that's the reason why I kind of tend to go a little low. But if you're someone that's not used to like putting too much color in the eye, this could be a little much for you. So start off with just a little bit if you decide to try this out. So by doing the transition, this is gonna allow the next shade to go on a little softer and not too intense. I mean, if we didn't have a transition, can you imagine the darker shade going that low? It would be really intense. So it's best to do that and then from there move on to the darker shade. So I'm gonna grab the shade Endgame and what I'm gonna do is now press this against the lash line and I kind of just like to tap it on versus try to smudge it around. Kind of like that. And you see it just kind of now blend into that first shade. And I'm also gonna add some eyeliner to the lash line. So normally for a daytime smoky look, I either go with anything nude, bronzy, or brown. I find it just to look so much better than wearing an all black eyeliner. So my favorite shade is from Marc Jacobs and it's called Brownie. This has got to be one of the most beautiful brown eyeliners I think I've ever worn. You can see I literally use it so much. It's kind of like a red brown eyeshadow, so it looks really nice if you have brown eyes. If you have light eyes, it'll look even better because it does have that slight bit of red undertone in there. So it's gonna really make the eyes stand out. So I'm gonna first and foremost roll this on my, up here, I don't know what this is called, but I find myself to have like a little gap right there, so I always have to add liner in this area. And then from there, I'm just gonna run a little bit of the liner along the lash line. Now another reason I really like to wear brown in the waterline during the day is because if it does fade off, it fades into a really pretty bronze shade, rather than if you have a black eyeliner and it fades off, it can fade into a kind of gray shade and sometimes kind of wash out the eyes. So this is gonna still complement it and kind of just complete the eye look. I'm gonna go ahead and start dusting off the transition powder. I'm gonna finish off with a little bit of lower lash mascara on the eyes. And again, just gonna go back in with that NARS Climax mascara. So just a little bit is all we are doing. Ooh, this looks so good. So for lip liner today, I'm gonna go in with the ColourPop X E Curvy Lip Liner. This is one of my lip liners. I came out with them about almost two years ago. And this shade is Perfection, if you guys have not used it yet. And then for my lip color, I'm gonna be using Kristen Dominic's Cream Matte in the shade Bathe. And I'm going to actually be applying this on with a brush. I don't know why I'm doing it like this either. <laughs> Ooh, bomb, so pretty. The gloss will look really nice, so I think we need to add a little bit of a gloss. I'm gonna use this one from Kylie. This is the Sweet High Gloss. <laughs> and same thing, I'm just gonna go ahead and apply this on with the brush. Oh yeah. My lips are a little dry right now. It is that time of the season where everything is drier than usual. Super cute, I love it. I love, love, love this look. Oh my goodness, I almost forgot. Highlight. And I almost fit too. So for highlight today, we're gonna to be using a new highlight. This is from Maybelline, and this is the Maybelline X Puma in the shade Knockout. And I like that it has like a little bit of a golden tone in there, a little bit of a pink and golden, so I figured it would look really nice with this look. So I'm gonna take this in with a blending brush, hit the high point of my face. Oh yeah, it looks like a really nice, just kind of golden, golden finish, a little bit of pink, a bit more golden than anything else. And then for my nose, I'm just gonna add it to the tip. Just the tip. Should we have a little bit of a smaller brush? Last final step we're gonna do is set it with my all-time favorite setting spray. You guys already know what that is, Urban Decay All Nighter. And I'm gonna do just a few rounds. And then just if you guys don't know, this is a 16 hour setting spray. It really just helps to lock in your makeup, makes it last all day. Allows it to not move around either. Every time I wear this, I feel like my makeup just stays put. It doesn't change at all in the way it looks. It doesn't get dewier throughout the day. It doesn't get more matte throughout the day. It just stays how I want it to look. It also has here temperature control technology. So under any weather conditions, your makeup won't shift, move, or change at all. So that is 
a plus. All right, darlings, that is it for today's makeup tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed learning how to get this look. This was so much fun to create this. I feel so pretty, honestly. This is like my go-to look that I just feel so comfortable in and I cannot wait to wear it out. So if you guys enjoyed this look, be sure to let me know in the comments down below. Let me know your overall thoughts on everything. And yeah, that is pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for sticking around and watching this entire video. I will see you guys in my next video. Let's get off. Let's get off.